This is Emily Figdor, District 2 school board member and co-chair of this committee, uh, co-chair, I should say, of the um, the DABC. Um, I also welcome tonight the BLAC for this joint meeting. And um, let's see, I think we've done intros because we've done joint meetings the last few meetings. So if it's all right with everyone, I'm going to um, skip the intros tonight and we can get right into the agenda. Um, I am going to suggest that we review the minutes at the end of the meeting. So we have um, ideally as many people uh, to review them and suggest any edits or corrections as possible. Um, so we can get right into the agenda and tonight we do have an action item. So um, I uh, will hand the meeting over to Mark at Harriman in a moment, um, but do want to flag that we're going to do um, some updates and uh, on the construction, um, look at the budget numbers, um, and then we will have, uh, um, we do have a recommendation that uh, we hope to act on tonight. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mark. Very good. And uh, I am joined also by Lisa and Emily. So we're going to do Lisa and I think we'll do some tag teaming here, but our format is the usual format. We'll get a construction update and let everyone know what's going on at three different schools from a construction point of view. Uh, and then we'll get into some of the finances, uh, budgets, and um, and that's where, as Emily said, we have some action items. So uh, with that, let me uh, see if I can get the presentation mode going. There we are. And I will... Um, as usual, try to keep an eye on hands raised and things like that so I can pause and a facilitator can um, call on folks. So with that, we have um, the construction update, the budget update, contingency update, and uh, the furnishings, fixtures, and equipment update, which is, I think, something that we we kind of started uh, the last time, and uh, we're really starting to now finalize what that is starting to look like. So with that, um, start with Longfellow. Uh, Lisa, I don't know if you want to do the update on the construction for Longfellow. Sure. So <clears throat> Longfellow, um, phase 2B, uh, which is the lower level, um, finishing drywall uh, prep to start finishes in the toilet rooms. And this, re this phase remains on schedule to be completed um, February 17th. Um, phase 2C, which is the elevator, um, prepping the elevator, um, installation next year, metal siding, and this uh, remains on schedule to be completed April 14th. Phase 2B, sorry, 2D, um, which is the addition, um, starting to install the exterior brick masonry, um, windows are installed, um, they're pouring concrete stairs and in-wall inspection is scheduled for tomorrow. Um, this phase is scheduled to be completed February 17th, and we're continuing the check-in with the contractor um, to uh, make sure that that is remaining on schedule. Um, and we'll provide updates uh, if anything changes. Next slide. Phase 4B, kindergarten classrooms. So the above ceiling inspection passed on January 10th. The final inspection um, was scheduled for January 11th. However, due to a delay by the millwork subcontractor, it was moved to Wednesday, January 18th. Um, this was communicated um, and we received a verbal approval on January 19th to allow um, occupancy of teachers on that Friday to unpack and students to start in their spaces on Monday, January 23rd. Um, so they are in those spaces. Um, the millwork subcontractor completed their installation and a few pinchless items are remaining, um, but that did not prevent the certificate of occupancy. We did our punch and completed that on the 18th and um, the principal was notified of the schedule shift and alerted teachers and their moving date had been pushed back. Um, and we let the contractor know that if there were any um, 
cost incurred by that shift in the date um, that we would let the contractor know they would be responsible for those. We haven't heard of any um, at this time, but uh, we will um, uh, continue to check if, if that changed and uh, let the contractor know. Next slide. So phase five, so this is the second floor. Um, abatement uh, will begin over February vacation. Um, we've submitted these phasing drawings to the city and they're reviewing those and we're working on phase six plans um, to the city. Um, phase five, which is the second floor, is scheduled to be completed on, in August 2023. And so right now um, what they're working towards is to finish that addition so that spaces can move in downstairs and into the addition. We can clear off the second floor, get the second floor done, and then get phase six done over the summer so that we don't go into the fall with construction. Um, that remains the plan and challenges. Um, there is a delay by the millwork subcontractor um, that delayed the inspection. Um, but the millwork has now been installed. Um, and there were concerns that were flagged about improper uh, vapor barrier and window installation um, identified by the Sparhawk report. Um, and uh, we need that to be remedied and documented before they uh, seal, seal that up. So they've been made aware of that. And um, Blaine Casey, the contractor, has submitted um, information to Sparhawk um, and waiting on an update, an updated report on that. Um, the concern is uh, if that doesn't get remedied um, uh, in a timely fashion, um, that could have uh, schedule implications. So we're monitoring that very carefully. Next slide. Lisa, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. Can you explain what the Sparhawk report is? Yeah, so it's a commissioning report. Um, the commissioning agent um, uh, essentially comes to the site, looks at mechanical electrical building envelope, plumbing systems, and essentially what they're doing is making sure that the systems have been installed per the design documents and are functioning as intended. And so if they see anything that is not um, in their scope of work, it is flagged in their report and the contractors are responsible for any of the remedies that are required to do it properly. And how often are there flags like this? Um, there's usually in, in every report, there's some things that need to be remedied. Um, I think um, uh, there was probably more than we typically see on the barriers. And I'll let Dave speak to that since he's, uh, probably been on site most out of out of all of us um, recently. Yeah, the the bulk of the issues with the air barrier application were the application process. Um, it, it was installed two 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 different ways, both of which are fine. Um, there was a, some areas were sprayed and they couldn't get to some areas to spray them, so they were applied with the roller. And the roller application is a three, it's a three stage process. And I think, the, I think the report documented them between stages two and stages three. So the, the uh, waterproofing air barrier subcontractor went back, addressed those areas. Uh, there were a couple of areas where the air barrier had been damaged by some other trades and they fixed those as well. Um, so they've been documenting the, the remedial work with photographs, as Lisa noted, and have submitted a revised a response back to Sparhawk um, that just needs to get verified. Okay, great. That's very helpful. So it's yeah, not, yeah. it's not that, um, that, Things need to be taken in a taken apart and redone, but the but to um, finish um, the work and it sounds like do some uh, remediation of problems that occurred along the way. Correct. Yeah. 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 Correct. The, the idea, the the goal, the goal is to identify the issues before anything needs to be redone. Okay. Thank you. Yep. 
and on this slide, you can see um, updated construction photos. Um, so the kindergarten corridor on the lower left has a new floor, ceilings, lighting, and paint. Um, you can see um, the addition um, on the back of uh, the Longfellow School and um, the kindergarten room with casework, um, flooring, ceilings, and paint. Um, and then the new elevator cab, as well as uh, a construction separation wall and door um, uh, separating uh, the occupants from the addition that is under construction. So exciting to see um, every phase, new spaces being turned over at Longfellow um, and being occupied um, and working through the rest of the spaces. I don't know if anybody else has any questions on Longfellow or comments. I don't see any hands. So, Reiki. Phases four and five. Phase four um, was completed and received its certificate of occupancy. Um, and um, that had uh, several elements to it, but um, and a couple things that have been done since we received that uh, certificate of occupancy. There are some heating issues in the conference, conference room that were resolved. Um, and a keypad access was added into the school between the brickwork and the main office. Um, phase five has begun, and that is um, the upstairs classroom wing um, demo and floor coring is complete. Metal stud walls have been framed, and they're starting to do sheetrock tops. The electrical and mechanical rough end is installed. Um, so that, that phase is going um, uh, smoothly and, and lots of progress there. I don't know if you have anything you want to add about either of those phases, Dave. Uh, no, I think, yeah, I think you covered it. Phase five is uh, cha changing every day. It uh, looks like a uh, very active construction site up there. Excellent. And then the roof update, the roof plaza work has been approved, and that will begin work this summer. Um, challenges uh, that we have at Reiki, um, the exterior siding was delayed. Um, and originally um, we thought it was delayed um, more than, than it is, but it is in route now um, and uh, will be delivered um, uh, this spring and the work will be um, delayed until early summer. Next slide. So here are some images of um, Reiki. So you can see um, one of the reading cubbies in the library space that's nestled underneath the stairs in the library. And uh, there's several of those um, in the library. And then you see the exterior wall um, installation, um, or in, I think it's say insulation being installed. Um, on the admin edition. And then um, folks uh, moved into phase four classrooms. And phase five is, uh, you can see the progress there. Walls are going up, um, studs are going up, rough ends of the mechanical and electrical as we talked about. Um, so that is uh, making good progress. Any questions on Reiki? Yes, Jeremy. Um, oh, I just wanted to, what, what was the, uh, I think I missed the last meeting, so this may have been discussed already, um, but what was the cost for the roof work? Uh, yeah, I think we actually have a slide for that later on, Jeremy, so we'll, we'll let you know exactly what that is. I'll, 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 I'll wait patiently. Thank you. No problem. Lauren? Hi, um, I just have a question. So the you just mentioned that the siding is delayed. Is that for this addition right here? Correct. Okay, so um, I just wanna make sure that like the proper precautions are met so that insulation's covered because sun and all of those other elements can really degrade the performance of that. Yeah, 
That's a really good point, Lauren. And I think I misspoke when I said insul insulation. It's supposed to say exterior wall installation. Um, it, I can see the insulation has not been started on that. So we'll make sure that that is that waits until we have the proper uh, protection for that. Okay, great. Yeah, it's really small on my screen, so I can't really see <laughs> what's happening. No, okay. that's, that's the, they are tiny photos. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good flag, Lauren. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to present, Scott. Um, so front and rear additions. The cafeteria and corridor rubber flooring um, was installed. The rubber base is ongoing. Um, we had some challenges with improper color of flooring being installed in the cafeteria that we're working through next steps on that. Um, that is a challenge that we talked about on the next slide. Um, Walk-off carpet installed at the front and rear uh, vestibules. In the cafeteria ceiling clouds, essentially the acoustic ceiling um, areas, um, are installed and are currently being filled with ceiling tiles. Uh, installing ceiling diffusers and duct accessories. Um, ca cabinets and millwork in the pre-K art and music classrooms are installed. MagWrite, which is a writable uh, magnetic surface um, in Forbo, uh, which is a tackable wall surface that is colored, um, are installed. Uh, sinks are installed. The main lobby skylight is installed. Um, mini splits in the MDF, which is a data, um, the main distribution frame for the data service is installed. And fabric wall panels and music and cafeteria. Um, Painting um, is uh, it's receiving its final coat in the back edition, and um, I think it has received its final coat at this point. Installing cafeteria AV system, replacing uh, glass and main entry vestibule due to issues with the glass, and installing main entry metal soffit. Um, this is not yet complete, and we're working with the contractor to understand when it will be um, complete. And they're actively trading back and for some some details right now to um, get that completed and um, Harriman uh, completing uh, Harriman punchless items in the front edition. Going to the next slide. So lots of lots of stuff coming to completion. This is getting incredibly close. Um, challenges. CMP has been provided um, has now provided permanent power to the rear edition. However, this did cause delays. Um, they're supposed to have power by December 29th. Um, Trico was delayed in delivering casework in art, music, and small teaching spaces um, to the point where the owner of the construction company went out and visited the factory to figure out what was going on to ensure that we got the casework to the site. Um, but they were able to deliver and install it for the inspection. That's what we were really working towards. We got the verbal certificate of occupancy uh, yesterday, so that's really exciting. Um, and what we're doing right now is our punch list so they can pick up the punch list items. And when they're done with that, we do the flush out um, for the lead um, uh, certification. And then we can occupy um, the back edition. Um, right now, that is all scheduled to make sure that we can do the flush out over February break um, and be able to occupy after that. Um, this is the challenge with the flooring color in the cafeteria. Um, we're working through that with them. Um, and um, they've run out of accent colors in the corridor flooring. So they're going to use a temporary um, color for now and replace it over the summer when the correct color comes back in. Um, so the flooring will be usable. Um, they will just have to replace in order to execute the design intent. Next slide. Oh, I can see there's a question. Yes, go ahead, Laura, please. Um, I apologize. I wasn't at the last um, joint meeting. And um, thank you, Lisa, for I was just one of my questions was going to be when what's the timeline for moving into the addition of Prism Scott? Can you explain what the you mentioned the flesh out? What is that? Yeah, so Part of uh, the contract is meeting uh, lead silver uh, for these buildings. 
And one of the credits is a flush out where essentially we do a certain amount of air exchanges in the building before the occupants move in. Um, and so that's essentially what it is. It takes uh, for, uh, we had to run different calculations as to how many air exchanges and, and how long that would take. It takes four days uh, for the back addition. Um, and so that that's essentially what that is. Can I correct you, Lisa, though, that's happening prior to February break because we're moving February during February. I'm break. sorry. Okay. Prior to. Yep. yep. I got it confused. My apologies yeah. with Longfellow that's happening over. Yeah, no worries. I just want to make sure that everyone's clear about that. Angie, I'm just glad Angie. you're here. So my follow-up question was with the moving, um, what does that timeline look like as far as teachers having time to pack and then unpack and is there any way parents could sign some sort of form saying if I get hurt I won't sue the school department I mean is there a way for parents to help teachers with the move and all of that Tamara you're on the, you're on right I, I want I don't want to take yes. the 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 you know the glory from Tamara who's planned this entire move so I'm gonna let her answer your question Laura okay. Um, well, I don't know what you're doing at the school, Angie, but on the 21st, we have movers planned to come on the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, if needed, during February break. Um, I don't know what your plan is before that, Angie, but they're packing and they're moving the stuff for them. I think that after that, I'm not sure about the unpacking part, how that's going to yeah. I think we have a crew Us, um, yeah. at school. Yeah, so okay. we have a crew at school who will unpack. We're asking for teachers to provide um, diagrams of where they want things. So the idea is that we're going to have it in place by the time they get there. And then we have a plan, if we need it, the day that they arrive back to have something fun in our new cafeteria to support the teachers who had to move, if needed. Um, it, sound, it feels pretty good. Um, and I think we'll be able to occupy some of the spaces prior to that time. I'm not like fully, but we're like, we're hoping to have our community meeting in the cafe in February. And Laura, if there are, um, if there is additional need, I know that for instance, at Reiki, I've done a ton of packing and unpacking over the months. So it's just a parent in the community, in the Reiki community. So if there is a need um, and, um, you know, anyone's reaching out, uh, that's definitely something you can do as a volunteer. Okay. So Javier, then, just to be clear, though, Javier told us that we yeah. couldn't do that, Emily. Um, <laughs> um, and so I just want to make like, I'm great with that. If that's the if that's the answer, that's awesome. But you know. I, think that I, I think the idea was not to have the teachers do the labor. Um, but if, you know, if after all the move is done and there's some unpacking still to do. But all right, I hear I hear that. Laura, did you That's, have that sounds great, Emily? That sounds great. Yeah, no. So um, I know that the move at Presumpscott is kind of a two part because we need to get teachers out into the addition. And then there's also the move of like the second grade teachers coming into the mods and teachers it's moving out of the library and the library moving in. So, I mean, is there, I mean, is it's that all happening? Shift? It's all happening the same time period. Oh, okay. I mean, it's February break. So we'll move, you know, we'll do it in sections, you know, we'll, we'll move them over there. Then we'll move these over into these classrooms. So yeah, it's all happening okay. the same couple of days. Yep. We have lots okay, of movers great. and packers and we think we're ready to go. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. Aura. Thank you. Um, Lisa, I was just wondering if the delay in, um, and I haven't been able to check in with Angie about this recently, so just wondering about the delay of the, um, you know, using the front entrance, does that have to do with the metal soffit issue? Is that? It has to do with a series of things. It has to do with the siding coming in late, and then they ran into the metal um, siding. I understand there is some staffing issues on their end as well. So there's a myriad of things but right now we're working on wrapping up the the metal siding or soffit and that's what and you're it's almost done and it's almost done yeah and yeah. i saw the lights getting put like that seemed like a new yeah. piece so we that's so what you're talking about lisa with the back and forth with finding out the timing 
um, those were the pieces yes. finished up in the front. Correct. Yeah. There's a, some detail that we are working through with them so they can get okay. that closed up. And is any of that about safety of using the front or is it really just wanting to have all the finishes done before using it? I was just curious. Um, it's right over top of the main entry where kids yeah. are going to be walking in. So I think it's trying to make sure that we keep keep that separation and get that wrapped up so they can turn okay. it over. Okay. So it's not really just a small finish. It's like an important part. Okay. Um, because I'm just noticing, you know, like just the staff, the flexibility of using that entrance, like, you know, and like we have yep. basketball starting in, and like, that's pretty hard to be able to go through this. Right. So um yeah, so I appreciate that it's it's getting there, but just wanted to understand what was missing. So, okay, thank you. We are we are so close, but um, Lisa, can you just like I think there is like a like a minor little like centering issue, right? That's going on as of today. Is that, is that right? That, that might slow it down. Yeah. Uh, my understanding is it's the soffit getting past the I beam, and so we got an RFI today about a detail that we're reviewing right now to try to get a. Uh, resolution to that so they can just get it done. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Elizabeth? Um, what are the options being discussed for the flooring in the cafeteria? And is one of the options to just leave it and get a refund <laughs> to try to have some cost it's, savings? It's What's one of the things that we're talking through is if we can get a um, reasonable credit. Elizabeth, does, did that answer your question? Did you have any more? Yeah. Angie, I'm wondering what you think of the wrong color uh, of flooring the floor looks fine it's a <laughs> decent red i i think we keep it uh it's in front of a beautiful new you know projector and screen no one's looking at the red floor <laughs> and, and i asked faculty today just to make sure because like i'm always like let's just move forward and faculty is like no i like it so i think we're good we just want to make sure we get you a decent credit <laughs> For us, right? Because it would just go back in the pool of money for furniture for everyone, probably, right? So I think that it's better to put get the money rather than to change the floor. It's just it's just silly. Okay, that's helpful to hear. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, thanks. I'm um, just curious about the roof leak that occurred today. Has that been chased? And uh, just curious if there's any update on that. I can speak. Yeah, to there that. is. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You can tell what you can. Well, it wasn't a. Con it wasn't really to the construction, so I'll let you talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't find out about it till about two o'clock. But um, the only thing I know so far is that, and I don't know much because they haven't chased it. We think it's backup of the roof drains, of course, from all the snow we got got plugged up with snow, and then we had all that rain on top of it, causing dams. Uh, up there and we I think uh, it, that's what caused the leaks today we're waiting for main roofing to get me a report uh, they were supposed to go out later this afternoon or tomorrow morning first thing um, I guess Great Falls went uh, up on the roof and dug out the roof drains is that correct Angie is that yeah what? that's that's okay. exactly what happened they they they, they, they um, sucked all the water out um, and it's my understanding is yeah there's three damaged roof drains one of which has been replaced two that need to be replaced so yeah, more to come on that. I'm having I don't have the report yet. And it's not it's not I, I heard Lisa say that it's not related to the construction. It doesn't it doesn't I, sound it, like it doesn't, it. it doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be. It's on it's the old big, all the old sections, yeah. It's just one big hot mess in the hallway right now. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We're just want to get a fix because there was a lot of work done in that hallway with speaker system and, and things like that, that we don't want to have wrecked by this water damage. So that's my right. concern more than anything is just to get those um, drains replaced. If that's what it is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this. The snow and the, and the rain caused roof leaks all over the district. So, yeah. Um, Nicole and then Emily. Uh, 
we might have lost Nicole. Uh, she's there. I think she's on mute. Sorry, just along the lines of roof leaks, um, I understand there was a lot of snow and rain in the last few days. Um, we have several in the classrooms right now, and I didn't know. Um, uh, and again, I understand it's it's separate from the construction. Um, but and again, maybe this is not my understanding of of construction. But it would be helpful if we could have somebody come in and just um, kind of review next steps on on whether we should be moving in to the classrooms or not, because that was scheduled for tomorrow. Are you talking about your the the second grade ones or the kindergarten ones? Um, both, but but the second grade ones are are. Um, so uh, my understanding on the second grade ones was that there was an HVAC pipe leak today and the HVAC team was there repairing it this afternoon. That's okay. my understanding. The okay. roof one was we know we have to replace the roof drain, but there was so much snow up on the roof. We weren't able to get up there, but now, now we can schedule that. Okay. I think if, if, yeah, the, I, it, it sounds like there's some work in progress. If somebody could perhaps just, check in and let us know what the status because I think we're a little bit hesitant to unpack all of our stuff. Yeah, Nicole, I'll touch base with you in the morning. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Nicole. Emily? Um, I just have a question. <clears throat> if someone from the architecture design team could explain, because so we have this... Um, I just want to, when people ask me, I just want to be able to explain to them. So we have this V at, above the entry. Um, it's a new design. It's beautiful. Um, we also have a large skylight. So we've never had water coming in in the way that we did today down in that area. We've for sure had other water features <laughs> um, <clears throat> in the mods and such. But I'm just wondering... If you can explain to me how the water is to leave that area, especially given that we have lots of snow and um, it would be helpful for me to explain it to the community when, when teachers say to me, well, aren't you collecting a bunch of snow right there? <laughs> um, that it would just be really helpful to understand the design. So I can say, oh yes, the water is supposed to, it has a drain and it flows out a certain way because it just would be helpful. Yeah, Emily, there's a, a, there's a, a very shallow slope to the to the butterfly, the V, that uh, sheds the water back away from from where it would drop on top of people entering the building. So it it's intended to actually shed away from the, the roof edge where people are walking. We don't want that uh, draining down and, and icing or, or anything on the entrance. And then the curb we we'll call it a curb for the skylight actually that raises the skylight up um, several inches uh, about a foot and a half above the roof and that's all flashed with a, a roofing membrane and we have what we call crickets uh, that pitch the water away from low points and so it's always directing the water to the drain and so the failure i think has primarily been at the roof drains themselves uh and uh but the the uh, roof itself, the butterfly roof and the skylight uh, aren't contributing. There's actually a fairly small tributary area to the butterfly roof, so it's really not adding a tremendous amount of, of water to the rest of the roof capacity. The, those were existing roof drains, um, my understanding, that had um, backed up. That's my understanding too, Emily. We didn't talk. We talked earlier, and then I learned this information after the fact. That's my understanding as well. Is these are older drains. Until I get a report, I'm assuming they are. But until I hear back from Main Roofing, I'll have a better idea once I hear back. Hey, Mark, is there potential just to just to just to put all the potential because they're you know because of the new design, it could be depositing more water in the the drains that could be then blocking up is that is there potential of that or not we actually look at the, yeah it, it, it makes sense what you're asking but we actually look at the calculation of what the drain can handle and so we actually have 
to look at the capacity of the size of the drain and the piping leading from it. Uh, and that's part of that tributary area so that we know that the drain is sized appropriately. So it's, it's really more pro probably the idea that we had uh, the cycle of freezing and thawing and we had a lot of rain and then snow. Uh, and that's, that sort of is likely what the failure of the drain was from. Um, and there are older drains and, and sometimes the uh, seal around the drain to the roof uh, can be uh, in, in its age condition can start to uh, fail. And so that's where I think main roofing is going to be able to go up and take a look and see exactly where the, the failure occurred at the drain itself. But we, we, we size the, the drain to make sure that, or we look at the drain size to, to make sure that we're not adding um, more water than it can handle. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth asked a question in the chat, where exactly does, does the roof over the entrance drain to? So it, it drains right back behind it. So it, it's a shallow, like I said, it's a shallow pitch. So even though it looks like like it's kind of this folded plane, uh, the, the, the V, it actually pitches back away from the entrance onto the, the lower roof behind it. Excellent. Um, thank you everyone for all of that engagement and good questions. Don't see any more hands, so at least I think we can move forward. Excellent. So schedule update. Um, as noted um, previously, the CMP delay had pushed the move-in date to February vacation, uh, which Angie and Mike are comfortable with as it gives more time to do move-ins um, with teachers. The first day students will be will use the addition is uh, after um, February break, which is February 27th. Certificate of Occupancy Inspection of Area B, um, we have the verbal on that. We're just waiting for the paperwork um, that was yesterday, as mentioned. Um, as I talked about, um, we're doing our punch list. We we're out today. Our team was out today doing the punch list. Um, and um, the Terman Engineering Punch List of rear addition first two weeks of February, depending on CMP. So that's an old note. We apologize. We'll take that out. We are there today doing that. Great Falls complete Terman's Punch List after we give it to them tomorrow uh, through the 30th. And we reform the flush out um, the 31st through the 6th. Um, the um, owner can move things into the cafeteria um, February 7th through 8th and final move into spaces 18th through the 26th, which is February vacation. Students and teachers, as mentioned above, are on the 27th, and the site work dates for next summer are unchanged, um, and the front edition is expected. Um, it was expected to open up this week, in which we talked about uh, the areas that are being resolved right now to get that open as soon as possible. Slide. Uh, and this is just the, the site work schedule update, um, no changes um, since the last time we met. And then here are some images of the skylight installation and the north entry um, curtain wall in the west area. So where that is is at the end of the corridor of the pre-K and K classrooms. There's a little breakout space there that looks out to the woods um, and the play space. Um, then to the left of that, you can see the radius lights installed um, on the um, wood uh, panel acoustic ceiling. That is uh, that green um, swath of color that you see is uh, where um, the entrance to the cafeteria is. And then I'm um, going right down underneath that photo, the new lobby area um, with the um, design statement on the wall and uh, a nice little breakout space there um, right next to the admin. And then um, the green wall boards on the cafeteria south wall are going in. Um, the floor in this image is being protected because they have the lift in there to install the uh, acoustic ceiling. So these 
pictures don't give it justice anyone in the present Scott community. Like it's kind of done. It's just a lot of little extras. So everything that was kind of going in, it's in and it's just gorgeous. Angie, I can tell you I'm blown away by these pictures. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking at this saying, what? It's like you walk through the doors and you're like in a completely different universe. It's incredible. <laughs> like, I can't wait for people to go through. And I can't wait for the kids to come in that first time for the community meeting and be like, what? Can I just say quickly, like the kids are seeing through the doors sometimes and the level of joy that this is. It's just, um, the teachers are in the same way, so excited to see what's behind the curtain. So thank you. And thank you to everyone who put so much work into this. Because like we're at the end and I know there's people here who have spent years to get us to this point. So thank you very much. The, that joy of the students is, is the big reason why we do this. So, so soak those moments up. All right, and pass it back over to Mark. All right, you're right. the fun, fun part. <laughs> I know, right? She uh, needs to get all the picture parts and, and all the fun fun part on that. So, uh, so now the budget, which is an important part, just not as fun to look at. And uh, really, um, a tremendous uh, gratitude to David Lewis, the uh, uh, owner's uh, rep here on this, um, who worked extremely hard to chase all of the expenses on all four projects, uh, school projects, and to understand exactly uh, what has been spent and what hasn't been spent. And so this slide right here is uh, captures Longfellow. Um, and so just to, I think we, we have seen the, the different categories before, we've seen this budget before, but um, it's been a long time since I think we've updated uh, these two committees. Right. And um, so the, a is the construction cost, and so on Longfellow, you can see that we have about three million left um, to uh, to expend on the on the nearly eleven million dollars for that. Uh, and then we have the administrative costs and reserves category, and that's largely where where the FFE numbers uh, reside. So that's um, most most everything has been spent uh, in that area, uh, with the exception of the uh, furnishing fixtures and equipment. <clears throat> and then C is the fees and services of the professional. Uh, consultant fees and so the architect and uh, the folks that um, the commissioning agent for instance that we spoke about earlier and uh, David uh, Lewis his his um, uh, compensation comes out of this construction testing so uh, and that one really again there's not not a tremendous amount left we've got about two-thirds of that spent um, and uh, and so you can just kind of get a glance at uh, on the uh, amount of money that's the total project cost for Longfellow we've got uh, and that amounts just under 50 million. Uh, there's about 4 million that still hasn't been spent yet. So some of that is a, the big, big part of that 4 million that uh, hasn't been spent is really the 3 million on the construction side of it. So I'll pause if there are any questions before we move on to the next school budget. And just to give folks a sense of, um, cause I know this is a lot um, but of what's coming. So we're going to look at the budget for each school um, that looks like this, including for Lysath, and then we'll look at a summary. So, um, and we can, if you want to, we can look at all of these and go back um, to the individual schools if that's helpful, but I know it is a lot of information. Okay. As Emily said, we, we could definitely, I, I don't know that everyone wants to look at every line item, but um, just to give you a sense of uh, tracking all of it. So Reiki, um, uh, similarly, uh, again, it's, it's a very similar case where the majority of the unspent uh, a budget line item right now is the construction contract. So of the 3.2 million that has yet to be spent on Reiki, uh, 2.6 of it is the completion of the construction and the majority of the rest of it is the furnishings uh, and a little bit of the contingency. And Dave Lewis, who, who worked tirelessly on, on this, if you've got anything, Dave, that uh, you want to kind of highlight uh, no, I'd say you're doing a bang-up job, Mark. Um, 
but is this reflects the current status of expenditures as of uh, this is the end of January, so I would say uh, early early January to to mid January as some of the consultant invoices have come in. So this is this is within about a week and a half of being up to date. Oh, um, come back here for a second. So Um <clears throat> uh, as as you all know, we're almost complete uh, entirely the construction, with the, the the exception of the site work, and so a lot of that 104 is really the site work that'll be done this summer. Um, so really closing right in on the completion of uh, all the costs for Presumpska. And Lyseth, uh, as I said, uh, Dave went back and identified uh, where we ended up because uh, in the end of the day, the BFOF is a pot of money that's distributed to all four schools. And so that's what is important that we, we understand uh, that we're uh, spending within the constraints of the budget. So we, we don't want to overspend and then we'll catch ourselves in a, in a problem because we'll run out of money. So that's really what a lot of this exercise is, is ensuring that we uh, account for uh, the costs and that we're staying within the BFOF budget. Yeah, I'll, I'll weigh in just a hair on that and add that given that Lysif was completed over, over a year ago, um, it was still important to keep that analysis in the mix of the the holistic view of the entire BFOF program. So there's still a little money left in Lysif's budget, but at the same time, we just executed a final change order for a little, a little more work. So uh, even, even, even though it's, it's done and moved into and lived in, um, it's still, it's still part of, part of, part of the big picture. And as Emily said, uh, really this um, last uh, slide from the, on the budgets for all schools wraps up really what uh where we're at and so if we add up the budgets for each of the four schools um license longfellow reiki and presumpscott um right now <clears throat> all those line items add up to 64 million two hundred forty two thousand one hundred sixty four, and the bfof bond was for 64 million two hundred sixty thousand, and so the delta uh is 17,835. so it's it's good that we're uh, we're slightly under, um, not by much, but that's okay because we've got some contingencies in each of the projects, uh, and so um, this is really kind of uh, highlighting that that the um, overall budget is balanced. Pretty close there, huh? Um, <laughs> kind of crazy how remarkable it is. I mean, clearly we've been you know adjusting um, throughout, but to see it like this. Uh, Matthew. Thanks for this uh, financial summary. It's very helpful. Um, one of the things that you want to point out, though, is that we aren't really targeting budget. We're trying to target expenditures. So I, I think that a, a, a maybe more accurate slide is where are we with expenditures and where we projected with expenditures and what's left over. Uh, like, for example, LISEP's done, and so we probably should have that number up there um, rather than the budget number. So it is. Yeah, it's a good, good, good point, um, Matthew. That the, um, and what we anticipate is, with the exception of the FFE and the contingencies, we are going to expend all of the line items, uh, the budget line items. And so, so it's a little bit... Um, of a of a sort of point in time, if we were to add up all the expended amounts, we would know what we've expended to date, but it wouldn't tell us if we're balanced or not because um, we don't know how much more we have left to spend. But we're really the anticipation is that we're going to expend all of those line items with the like I said with the uh, the only ones that are, are still a little bit in play uh, as we've kind of talked through the several past meetings is how much is going to be left from contingency that we can apply to the FFE. Uh, and um, and so we're going to look at that in a little more detail here in a minute, but that's a good, good point.
All right. And with with that, that's kind of the, a great segue into the contingency. Uh, and so the Longfellow um, uh, original contingency was 554, um, and uh, the uh, that was 5% of the construction contract. Uh, we have uh, transferred uh, funds from Reiki and Presumpscot, um to help with the expending of more than what the contingency uh, would have been able to cover for the Longfellow. And so, um, and we've uh, expended, and, and this is, again, this is uh, at a point in time, um, but um, we've got uh, 324, or at that time that we had uh, put the slide together, we had about 324,000 left in the contingency at Longfellow. Um, with with Reiki, uh, as you would recall, we uh, spent, funds on the uh, roofing project. And so that really uh, used a lot of the contingency for uh, Reiki. And, um, and so it got us to a point where um, we have $25,000 uh, left at the time that the slide was put together. And as we mentioned on the slide last time, we knew that when we paid for the roofing project, we weren't going to have enough um, to cover the um, the amount of, that we were going to need to finish the project, and so um, so that um, that's where we need to look at uh, providing additional funds uh, for Reiki to cover the contingency. So we still have several months left on that, um, and um, as I said, we're going to going to need to uh, shift a little bit of uh, funds to that uh, project. Presumpscot, um, as we've been kind of watching uh, it uh, near the completion, uh, we um, uh, after we we transferred the seventy five thousand to help with a roof project, we had about thirty two thousand left for uh, for Presumpscot. So now, when when all the work at Presumpscot is done, we can then use that contingency funds to put back in the pot of money for the furniture, and that's kind of what we've been uh, eyeing as we've. Uh, get ready to complete these projects, how much will we have left after we've completed all the construction that we can use towards the furniture? And so this um, slide kind of is just a, a review of um, where we would be. So we're conservatively saying, okay, if we use all of the Longfellow 324,000, we won't have any money left from that contingency, if we use all of the presumpscot, uh, we would have nothing left for that one. And if we continue at the rate that we're spending now, Reiki will need uh, another $100,000 or so. Um, and I, um, I uh, remember, I think it was um, uh, Jeremy earlier asked what the uh, cost of the roof repair ended up being. I don't have that in front of me. I don't know, Emily, um, uh, why, if you can just look at that from our last slideshow. Yeah, let me, let me pull that up. It was like 120. I don't know. Uh, anyway. uh, you're going to put the, me on the spot. <laughs> no, the, uh, the, the plaza roof repair change order at Reiki was $288,245. Boy, I was very off. We won't judge. It's okay. And so um, what we're recommending at this point is that we take $100,000 from the FFE budget to cover the estimated contingency needed for Reiki. Um, and, uh, and so that um, uh, would shift over, and we'll look at what that means for the FFE budgets after we shift that over right now. We can again, we can go back to any of these slides. So um, <clears throat> with the furniture update, Presumpscot, um, there was an early furniture package um, and uh, a lot of it was the needs uh, that uh, Anch identified for the first uh, uh, phase of, of completion and move in. Uh, and that amounted to about $25,000. Um, that has been uh, procured. So we're waiting for the furniture to come for that. Um, 
we've begun uh, inventories of what the Reiki and Longfellow have. And so we, we have some sense of where the condition of the furniture is and the quantities of furniture um, in those two schools. Uh, and so um, the idea is that um, with the uh, re- amount that we have remaining for FFE, that um, uh, we're suggesting that uh, each school kind of is uh, a, um, attributed an amount of the total FFE, and we'll share what that looks like in a minute here. But um, just thinking about where that FFE budget has been, we started the budget for the three schools at $2.2 million. We had the cost for the delay uh, in new work claims uh, for Reiki, and that was 837000 we had the deduction for the presumpscut new delay claim, new work and delay. That was 170000 And then, uh, as we're talking about right now tonight, shifting 100000 to cover the contingency needed to complete Reiki. So after we add those amounts up, we end up with about $1.1 million left for FFE. The next part of this slide shows that we have spent already some of the FFE on technology. And so you can see that we spent about 87000 at Longfellow, 132000 at Presumpscut, and two hundred and two uh, 292000 uh, at Reiki. And I think we shared those with you um, on a previous meeting, may have even been last meeting. So, so those total 615000 So that uh, leaves us with, um, uh, and then this is, uh, uh, let me go back for a second here. Um, so... Total remaining FFE after the technology is, is um, six hundred thousand dollars, and so that's that's what we're saying would be available for uh, the three schools. Um, if we look at what was spent, just as a comparison for Lyseth for the furniture that we put there, um, we spent about one hundred twenty-eight thousand for the uh, furniture, and then we spent a hundred uh, a little over hundred thousand dollars for technology, so uh, two hundred twenty-nine thousand. So. Uh, in some ways, we're, we're looking uh, comparatively at if we were to to think about the 128 that was uh, spent on furniture for for Lyseth, and and gives you some sense of thinking that if we take the 600,000 and appropriate it for the three schools based on um, population or enrollment, uh, gives you some some comparable idea of what is available for furniture at the three schools. And so um, this says, okay, if we took that 615,000. And we prorate it by the enrollment. And so Longfellow um, has 254, so it's about 27% of the three school enrollments. Reiki is 445, is 47% of the enrollment. Uh, and uh, Presumpscut is uh, 241, which is about 26%. So, um, and so if we uh, do the math, that would leave 166,000 for Longfellow furniture. Uh, and Reiki would be 289,000. And presumpscat would be 159,900. So, and that 159 would cover the cost of the uh, amount that uh, that first almost $25,000 um, procurement of uh, of immediate needs that uh, has already gone out. So that um, gives you some sense. So that would that would still leave at presumpscat um, about 100 um, and uh, uh, 135,000 or so um, for additional furniture. I know Angie's probably already thinking what she might spend that on, um, but um, and so so that gives you some sense of what we're suggesting is the game plan here as we roll forward uh, to complete the construction uh, with the contingencies that we have, and um, and we really in earnest start start purchasing the furniture. It, it may be that we actually have a little bit more than the six hundred fifteen thousand if we find, it, for instance, that we don't use all of the contingencies for uh for reiki and for longfellow okay so um i want to pause and i believe this is the last slide before the kind of upcoming dates so i want to pause take questions um i already see a couple of hands up um once we have all our questions answered then we're going to go back to the recommendation um and ha- and consider um, unless there's an alternative recommendation to actually um, consider and vote on uh, on that recommendation. Um, so I'm going to start with Aura and then go to Matthew and Nicole. 
Thanks. Um, so Mark, I just had a couple questions about this slide. Um, so, so this is after the amount that you already sh shared for each school, right? Um, what would be remaining? To yes, so this, this is really what we're saying is if we pool together all of the furniture funds um, that haven't been spent yet, haven't been allocated, uh, this is the amount of money that we have. And this is looking at uh, how we would take that pool of money for furniture and divide it into the three different schools. Okay. So I guess my other question is just, I understand the formula idea of per student, but I guess to me, it feels like because each project is so different and the needs for the FFE, right, depending on the changes to the space, right? So I guess I'm just wondering how that part can be accounted for um, just because I know the needs are really different in each building, right? So I don't know what how to adjust for that, but it just seems like just per student might not meet the actual need for each building. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it, it does. And um, and it would be uh, an interesting um, exercise to try to figure out how to, to develop um, a fair formula to, to determine that. But I will say, after we did our inventory of the condition and the number of uh, pieces of furniture that we think with these uh, allocated funds, um, we'll be able to address the most significant issues with uh, some of the most distressed furniture in each of the schools. Okay. So, and yeah, that seems like the other thing is um, distressed furniture, but also like with brand new spaces that don't have right. furniture at all, right? So like, yep. it seems like those are two different needs, right? So, so you're saying looking at both new spaces that don't have any furniture and then also assessing furniture that no longer can be used. You're saying that these amounts for each building are looking like they'd be sufficient to meet what you've um, done the inventory on. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and so, um, and so I think, you know, one way of thinking about it is that Presumpska, we have, we used to have one room for music and for uh, art. Um, and now we have two spaces. And so we have a new space there that we'll need furniture for. Uh, and so, um, so that's, um, there's enough money to cover all the new spaces in each of the three schools. So okay. we've got a few new pre-K rooms. We have um, uh, some new uh, special uh, spaces. And so all those, all those rooms will be able to be uh, outfitted with these funds. Okay, thank you. And Mark, just to um, follow up on Ora's question, one other way to do it might be to look at the um, the square footage of of space that we um, that was in, you know under let's say heavy construction. And um, my sense is that these that the numbers would look fairly similar, just based on the projects. Yeah, I think I think that the um, it, it would. Uh, I think you're right, Emily. Okay, thank you. Matthew? Yeah, that was a big thing that I wanted to make sure is when we're talking about need, what is, you know, what, what is the priority and are we covering it? And if there's a gap, how do we kind of convey that? But if you're saying that there's kind of no gap and, and the need is, it will be met, that's important. That the question I had was around the contingency for Longfellow. It's it's still pretty significant for the next 10 months, um, more significant than, you know, the expect, expected expenditure for Reiki's contingency. I mean, are you seeing that that contingency will be burned through over that time? Or um, now that construction is kind of underway and, and there's an understanding of where things are, are there outstanding change orders that are going to eat that up? Or I think if you could talk a little bit about um, going through that contingency. Sure, absolutely. And and Dave Lewis probably has the, he, he puts out what is currently, I mean, he, he does the, uh, at at moment in time, what we have for potential changes and what have been approved for changes. Uh, and Dave, I'm putting you a little bit on the spot here. Do you have the latest update for uh, Longfellow? Well, yeah. well yeah. Mark, that was a great segue. I have my spreadsheet open this very second. Excellent. Um, currently, currently there is there's a hundred and sixty thousand dollars in pending change orders at Longfellow. Um, 
many of them, a couple of the big ones predate me a little bit, um, but they've gone back to uh, the contractor for review and revision. So just in, in tracking what I call the worst case scenario, um, at this snapshot in time, um, there's actually it's almost $162,000 in open change orders at Longfellow above and beyond those that have already been approved. So once once we get through that backlog, then we can reevaluate remaining contingency again. Um, but they're they're moving in to work in the existing building now. Um, so you know, just uh, g- given the age and nature of the building, it's prudent to keep uh, keep keep a healthy budget going into it. And, and you know, to your point, Matthew, if, if um, we don't spend it all, then then that will increase um, the total pool of uh, monies available for the furniture. Thanks, Matthew. Nicole. Matthew, you're set, right? I didn't cut you off there. Okay. Um, I I think my questions um, were similar to the the two people in front of me. Um, just you know, in thinking about the the FFE budget, what how, what gets classified into that budget? Um, for example, there are some areas in our school that at Longfellow that were not touched. Um, the gym and the library and and we are looking at you know some really old furniture and trying to accommodate meeting spaces and just trying to you know just trying to accommodate what use what we have and i didn't know if there if if that would be a consideration um to be able to kind of help update the space using furniture ordering you know new whether it's new um gym supplies or cafeteria supplies that would make kind of the space feel um, both more updated, but also more amenable to um, the needs, the current needs, even though we didn't actually get those needs or have construction in those areas. Yeah. And I, and I think, uh, Nicole, the, the sort of um, uh, methodology here is that after uh, the uh, portioning of the funds for each school that the school uh, community can help in determining where those priorities are. Great. That's great. I'll, I'll speak a little bit, Nicole, to the process we went through with, with, with Angie. We sat down and prioritized what are the, we need these immediate needs. Um, and that was what the quick ship um, uh, order was that we've done already um, to be able to supply those spaces. So it will be a, it will be a prioritization exercise. Um, uh, once we go through it, and we'll sit down with each principal and go through that and look at um, those versus what the, sp- the funds we have to expend. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Elizabeth? Um, that's a good segue into my question. So the original um, money that was spent um, for the FFE at Presum Scott that has already been purchased um, comes out of this $160,000. And with the excess funds, is it, is it to meet the non-immediate needs? What are, what are the excess funds going to be used for? Yeah. And that, that sort of is built on that uh, conversation that we just had where each school community can now look at where the, needs are the prioritized list of of what is needed for each of those schools but that the uh, the the $25,000 was just an immediate need not all of the need correct? that's right that's, that, that's what i'm trying to clarify okay thank you yeah, it's just from the front right. of the um those of this from the front office space okay okay yep thanks this <laughs> this front office, a couple other offices, but Anj had a priority list and a, hey, I'd like to have um, next list, if you would. Um, so we For instance, of prior. circular tables in the cafeteria, a desire, a need, a want, a need, maybe not, but a desire. So it's like, what am I going to give up? Right. 
if I, if I have this amount of money um, or what we're going to give up if we have this amount of money, which we have, we're all going to have to do a little and bit. Does of. that 25,000 include furnishing the new classrooms, like the new pre-K and K classrooms and the new no, art room? No, and there, there's no new pre, just to clarify that too, there's no new pre-K oh, classroom. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. For Zom Scott, right? Yeah, but it's a new, yeah, yeah, yeah. New music room, right? Because we've never had a music room. And in kindergarten, um, is it kindergarten and first grade that are in the new? Uh, uh, kindergarten and pre-K are in the new edition, um, okay. but we've always had them. So there are some things that will be replaced because they're really old. Um, but then there'll be things that we kept because they're pretty new because our pre-K is pretty new. Gotcha. So, yeah. Thank you. And one thing I'm wondering, and Angie and... Um, Nicole and Reiki lead teachers, I'm wondering if when, once we get past the immediate needs, if there is an opportunity for the BLAC to um, folks on the building level advisory committee to help um, with thinking through once urgent needs are met, once immediate needs are met, what, um, how else might we spend the money? So it doesn't have, you don't have to answer now, but just a, that's typically how I think the BLAC has um, has operated throughout this process. So if there is an opportunity for this committee, folks on that committee to weigh in, um, I think that would be valuable. Jeremy? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I may have lost the thread of this, Mark, but um, you, you were saying that there, that sort of uh, deficit of $100,000 in in the Reiki budget might come out of this. So are you uh, assuming then that it'll come out of this 289.50 uh, and, or is that, oh, you've already got it on there. That's what, that's what I thought. So, okay. I just missed that. Thank you. So Mark, can you go back to the, the slide with the recommendation on it? Yeah. No. So I'm happy to take more questions. I think this has been a really, um, a really good conversation. Um, but ultimately, um, the work we have to do tonight, and this is really the DABC that would vote on this recommendation, but I'm very, um, you know, I'm very interested in um, the feedback from the BLAC as well. Um, but because we are changing a budget, a pro one of the project budgets, what we've done throughout this process is to have um, that recommendation be considered and voted on by the DABC and then advanced to the school board um, for their consideration. So the recommendation um, is to reallocate, as we've been talking about, $100,000 uh, from the FFV budget to cover um, what we expect to be the need for uh, remaining contingency at Reiki. So, um, are there any additional questions before we get to that, um, that to actually considering uh, what we'll need is a, a motion and a second, and then um, we'll actually take a vote on it. But I definitely want to don't want to head off any uh, any additional questions that folks might have. Luke, go ahead, please. Yeah, hey, I just wonder, you know, if we have two, 10 months left on two of these projects, like, what are the odds of having to have this conversation again? And are we at risk of, you know, basically losing a, much more of this FFV budget over time? And what will the, you know, what will the fallout be from that? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question, Luke. I think we would have been okay had we not uh, needed to, uh, to account for funds for the roof repair at Reiki. That's really what has kind of shifted things uh, to the needing to do this recommendation. That that's um, so overall the contingency budgets I think would have would have kind of we, we've been a little bit conservative with with looking at that and shifting the num the, the funds to cover contingency as we move forward. Um, but um, it's, a, it's a good question. We we think we're going to be in in good shape with. Uh, the final, uh, you know, closing out the really the two remaining schools with the um, with the contingency funds that we have. Thanks, Luke. Nicole. Um, yeah, I I just you know again this is definitely not my area of expertise, but just in walking through the building today and and seeing. Um, and hearing some people talk about the roof repair at Longfellow, I'm I'm just hoping I can 
learn more and be able to communicate that out in case, I mean, I, again, this is not my area of expertise, but if, if something, if we needed to repair it, where would, would we be able to do that without just and, making it? And the existing roofs that um, are seeing some uh, challenges or, or trouble spots, um, I think, Tamara, you, you probably uh, cover some of that out of, out of your other, other funds or maintenance funds. Is that right? Yeah, we would be, it would be at operations. It would be coming out of operations. The roof repairs, the roof drains, replacements, if that's what needs to be done. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, I don't see any other hands. So um, I think what I'll recommend is, uh, Mark, if you could take down the slide so I can we can see everyone. And then if there's a member of the DABC that would be willing to make the motion to move $100,000 from FFE to the Reiki contingency. Um, so and who, that was Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I think I should know uh, how you're so moved sound <laughs> by now. <laughs> <laughs> Took me just a second there. Okay. Is there a second? Someone from the DABC that's willing to second that motion? Second. Who was that? Sorry. It's, it's Ben. Thank you, Ben. Okay. Um, are there any further questions on the motion? Don't see any. Have a quick question: Do we have a do we have a quorum with the DA? No, I notice a lot of people are missing. We do. We do. I okay. Do. Yeah, Great. we do. But thank you for the good question. Okay. Are there? Is there any discussion about the motion? Okay. So um, I think, you know, again, just with given that this is a joint, uh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to ask for everyone to vote on it. Um, if you don't mind holding your hand, we're just going to do it um, by a show of hands. If you don't mind keeping your hand up so I can um, get a sense of the whole group, but then also look for specifically for the members of the DABC, I'd be grateful. So all of those um, who support uh, moving 100 thousand um, dollars from FFE to the Reiki contingency, please um, raise your hand. Okay, so okay, great. It looks unanimous. All right, um, so that uh, motion passes, passed unanimously. Thank you so much, everyone. And Mark, I'm sorry for the slides on and off, but if you want to go back to the last slide, I do think it's helpful to see the next, uh, the, the dates that are upcoming. Okay. And so um, we've shifted this date around a little bit, but um, it's uh, it kind of correspond with a little bit of a shifting of when we, um, Thought it was going to be a good time to be able to see the progress of the uh, three pro the three uh, construction projects, and so right now we're targeting Saturday, March fourth, for uh, building tours, and so it'll be great because um, Presumpscat will be um, really uh, complete, and so hopefully we can all walk right through that front door uh, and uh, see the new lobby and a lot of the new spaces, and so that'll be fun. Um, we have our next scheduled. Um, DABC BLAC meeting February 16th. And I believe that's before um, February break. Uh, and so it's a week before. And um, just kind of keeping uh, out there an idea for the Prism Scott ribbon cutting. Um, so which is uh, great to to be uh, at this point again. So uh, for those who have been involved in the journey of the BFOF projects for so many years, um, having getting to this point of uh, yet, yet another one of the schools um, uh, completing the, the construction uh, is pretty exciting. So celebrate that with a uh, ribbon cutting. Thanks so much, Mark. And I see Sarah has her hand up. Sarah, please go ahead. 
Yeah, I just had a question um, outside of the building tours for the DABC and the BLAC. What's the communication plan for the community since they were the ones that voted on the bond and approved the money? I'm just wondering, what's the opportunity for people in the community to, for us to have an open door um, or time periods for them to come? Because um, I think that's very important. So I, I don't think that Steve Stilfen is on tonight, okay. um, but he had this vision of inviting everyone. Uh, inviting the full community to um, to the building tours. Um, clearly, you know when we do the ribbon cutting, um, it's a it, uh, we're we're hoping the full community comes to the to those ribbon cuttings as well. But I do think for the building tours that Steve's the last time we talked about it, Steve really um, was talking about inviting the full community. Okay, and even if we did two different days, I mean, I know you know if we could think about that too, because that might be a lot. I mean, I. I have high hopes that a lot of people would come, but <laughs> um, just something to think about too, because that's a lot of people maybe to move through. But again, communication plan out to the community, I think is really important of how we convey that message out because it was, you know, a very contentious thing in the community for supporters versus, you know, defectors. And I, I think that seeing the end result of all of this long work and what they voted for and what passed for the voters is really important. So thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Such a good point. Really appreciate that. Um, Angie? This has nothing to do with next steps. I just want to clarify. So the are we saying that we are dividing that money up um, in terms of the way, for furniture in the way that it was proposed in the PowerPoint, or is that just going to be looked at in the future or voted on in the future? Or maybe it doesn't have to be voted on. I don't think that, uh, I don't think uh, we need to vote on that. Um, but Mark, um, can you, how long are we holding the FFE money before we take the next step in terms of, um, in terms of making commitments? Yeah, I think, I think we want to actually start that process relatively soon if we can. So it may be that we, um, we can look at, at a future meeting to, um, uh, to sort of make a formal recommendation about how we split up that money. Thank you. Okay, excellent. And then just as Mark said, our, we're going to continue with these joint meetings. I hope that works for, um, for members of both the DABC and the BLAC um, next uh, month. It is because of uh, February vacation. Um, and yeah, and and just to, um, I'm getting some uh, personal chat messages, and we definitely will vote on that formal um, breakout of the final FFE. My apologies, I just it just isn't on my radar screen for tonight. So <laughs> I know what I, I know what I have to do tonight. <laughs> so <laughs> um, thanks for the help um, for folks <laughs> chatting with me in in the uh, in the yeah sending me chats. All right. Um, so our next meeting is the 16th at 6 p.m. Um, and um, is there are there any last questions or discussion? Approval um, of the minutes. Oh, approval of the minutes. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Mark. Okay, so um, I hope that everyone was able to take a look at the minutes. So these are from our joint meeting on December 15th. Um, I'll start with, are there any questions on the minutes? Questions or corrections, clarifications? Okay. Um, is there, can someone make a motion to approve the minutes? So and move. Thank you, Sarah. Is there a second? This could be BLAC or DABC because they're joint minutes. Second. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, I didn't hear any questions or discussion. Uh, is there any discussion on the minutes? Okay. Then with a show of hands, um, please indicate whether you support approving the minutes from our December 15th meeting. And Matthew, I see Matthew Peters. Are you abstaining? Yeah. Abstaining. I wasn't there, okay. so I have no idea. It's uh, unanimous with, with one abstention from Matthew Peters. 
and the minutes are approved. Thank you so much, everyone. So that is it for our meeting tonight. Really appreciate the conversation and engagement. Um, it's getting so exciting to see um, all the progress we're making. Um, thank you so much for our building leaders who are on tonight. It's really helpful to have you a part of these meetings. Um, and uh, just to clarify, so the recommendation that we approve tonight will be on the school board's um, agenda. So uh, next Tuesday. All right. Um, with that, we are adjourned for the night. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening.